Hi, this is Simon Upstell and welcome to another tutorial for Motion 5. And today we're going to be taking a look at creating this paint dripping effect. So there's a few interesting things going on here and let's get started and see how it's done. First of all, I'm going to set up a new project. It's going to be 1920-1080, it's going to be 24 frames a second, and it's going to be 15 seconds long. So let's open that up. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import my background image. Well, the next thing we're going to do is create some text. So I'm going to type the word drips. I'm going to come to the inspector, center line. Let's have a height of 480, a baseline of negative 160, and let's center it up. So I'm going to make a new group to put this text in, drop that in there. I just want to warn you against using right click group or object group. It's really unreliable and it seems to be getting even more unreliable. I want to show you uh, why I say that. So look at the position of the text there. So we've got zero, zero. Now let's group it and let's come over and look what's happened. We've got minus 6.9, we've got eight and the text itself has moved the opposite direction. So this is all well and good, but it's, you know, those texts are stayed in the same place, but the problem is that in terms of lining up our project, those five to 10 pixels are gonna make a huge difference and they're going to really mess this up. So this seems to have got worse with more recent versions of motion, so don't do it. Okay, now let's make a mat to reveal the text. So I'm going to make a new group and I'm going to select the circle tool, drag out a circle roughly that sort of size, center it up. Let's set the fill and turn off the outline. And let's do object, make particles. Let's select a line as the shape. Let's have a start point of negative 540, Y start of 850, X end of 540, Y end of 850. And then let's set the emission range to zero. Let's set the life to 15. Then I want to come to five seconds on my timeline there. Hit, hit the keyframe button. I'm going to set that birth rate to 300. I'm going to step forward one frame and I'm going to set it to zero. Next, what we need to do is set the speed to 200 and the speed randomness to 100. And this is going to create a sort of wipe for our text like that, and it's going to wipe back again at the other end. Let's call this group mat. Let's move it behind everything else. Let's select the text group and then add an image mask, and we'll use that emitter as the source, like that. So now, you'll see the text wipes on and it wipes off. So next we'll make some particles. So I'm going to make another group at the top there. Let's call this group particles. And we're going to select the Bezier tool here. And we're going to draw, we're going to click right at the bottom there in the middle and then click and drag to around there click and drag to around there, come all the way up to the top here. In fact, let's come off the top. Let's have a rounded top there. Just want to make this sort of like something like this. Fill out the shape again like that. Just need to make that smooth. Make sure, make sure all of these are smooth. Let's make sure that we've got fill turned on. Just want to make sure that's vertical, something like that. Obviously, I can't give you precise instructions about how to make this, and we can always adjust it afterwards. But go for something like that, and it needs to be that sort of size in the canvas. And let's now duplicate that. So I'm just going to lock that bottom shape so I can work on this top one. Let's just move that over and double click on it uh, to select the points. And let's delete those points at the top there. And Let's delete this point as well here. And then what we want to do is sort of round it off like that. So we've got a small droplet like that. 
Okay, so there's going to be our two shapes. Let's call this one short and call this one tall. Okay, so I'm going to select the tall one and I'm going to come to Object, Make Particles. And let's drag this emitter out into a new group. And then I'm going to duplicate that tall particle cell. You can see that's the one with the circles there. Duplicate, and I'm going to add the short particle, that's that, to that copy. And then close up our particles group and hide it. Rename this one short. So now let's set up our emitter. Let's first of all, again, switch the shape to line. And again, uh, start at negative 540 on X, start at 850 on Y, positive 540 on X, 850 on Y. So we've got a line running across the top there. Again, let's set the emission range down to zero. And now let's select the short particle element there. Let's set the life to 15. And let's set the speed to 90. And the speed randomness to 90. So we're going to turn off that tall one while we work on this. And then I just want to come down to the scale here and set that to 30. And let's open up the scale randomness. And let's have a scale randomness, I think, of 20. I didn't need to open it up, but there you go. So we've got these particles looking like that. Then we want to come to our first frame. And what we're going to do is keyframe the birth rate. So click on the keyframe button, set this value to 2500. And we're going to step forward one frame and set that birth rate down to zero. So they're only emitting particles on frame one. And the result of that is going to be this. These particles falling down like so. So we're going to do more or less the same thing with the tall particle cell. So let's turn that on. I'm going to first of all come to frame one again. Let's set up the birth rate. So click on the keyframe button, set the birth rate to 3000, step forward one frame, set it down to zero. Or just remember to set the life to 15 so they last long enough. Okay, speed, we're going to have 165 for the speed and 200 for the randomness. Again, come down to the scale. Let's set the scale to 25 and the scale randomness to 20. So what's that one looking like? Let's turn off short so we can just see this one in its own. So now we've got these nice long drops like that. Then what we're going to do, we can turn that short one back on again. So we got the overall effect. So I'm going to add some behaviors to this emitter. So first of all, I'm going to come to simulation random motion. What we're going to do is turn off Y. Let's have an amount of 20. Let's have a frequency of 20. Let's set the noisiness to zero. And this will just make them drift around a bit so they're not quite so uniform. Let's add another behavior. So this time it's going to be particles scale over life and let's set the scale at birth to 100 and the scale at death to 50. And finally, I just want to add a simulations gravity and let's set that value to 15. So all those things together are going to help our particles give have a little bit more organic life to them. So next what I want to do is I want to grab my text group there. Let's call that text capitals, it's the text group, and I'm going to bring it up into that same group with the emitter in it. Let's call that group here background for BG for background, which got the background in it. Let's close up matte, we don't need to see that. And let's close up the emitter itself, just to tidy things up a little bit. So I'm going to call this group um, drips in capitals. That's going to be our master drips and text element. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a trick you've probably seen me use before, and that's to add a Gaussian blur, and after that a color levels. So what we're going to do is going to set the Gaussian blur to 64, and then we're going to select alpha here, and let's open up the histogram, make this easy for ourselves, come to opacity, we'll have a black in value of 0.5, and a white in value of 0.51. And you see what that does is it tightens up the, the blur 
And what's, what that's, we've now got is this nice effect of everything sort of sticking to itself. And you can see the way the paint sort of plops off the, off the text and so on. This is going to look really nice once we've got our overall effect set up. Okay, so now we're going to create a new group. So, object new group. I'm going to call this group height map. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to make clones of the text and the emitter and bring them into that. So first of all, let's make a clone of the emitter. So that's a clone, drag that into the height map there. And let's do the same for the text, the, the drips text. So make a clone, drag that into the height map there. So one thing I noticed as I was doing that is that I failed to center up my emitter. So let's do that, otherwise it's going to cause a lot of trouble. So let's right click, center that up. The clone will also need to center up, so right click on that and center that up. So now those two are, are in register. Uh, if they hadn't been, then we'd have had a lot of, of, lot of problems. So I'm going to make a group to put this clone of the emitter into. So with that selected, let's do object new group and let's drag that into the group. Again, don't be tempted to use the right click group option here because you really will run into tr trouble and I don't want you to do that. So into this group, we're going to add generators, generators color solid. We're going to move that behind the emitter and we're going to set the color to black. So let's select this group, add blur, Gaussian blur, Filters, color, levels. Again, let's set the Gaussian blur value to 64. And because we're applying this to a group with a background color solid in it, we can adjust the RGB rather than the alpha. So just going to bring the black in a little bit like that, not very much. And we also want to add a Gaussian blur to our text. So we can just grab that one there and copy it on. And that same value of 64 is going to be good for us. Okay, so now let's look at the, the effect this is going to have. I'm going to turn this group off because we don't actually need to see it. And what we're going to do is to our main drips group here, that's the, the main image group, we're going to add filters, stylize, indent. And then we're going to use our height map for the indent height map. And we need to turn off stretch to fit. And now you'll notice that everything's out of register. And that's because we need to set this group here that's got our emitter and our black solid in, in our height map group here. So this group here, we need to switch that to fixed resolution. And you'll see now that that is working much better. So everything's now in register. So let's set up the indent filter. We're going to have an indent softness value of 0.2. Let's reduce the ambient down to 0.25. Let's crank the highlight brightness all the way up so we have a nice shiny paint look. Maybe reduce the highlight sharpness down to 25. And I think I've reduced the depth down to 2. This is very much to taste. I don't want it to be too, to be too extreme, this effect. So I think you can see now that we've got the effect working fairly nicely. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to come to this height map group and I'm going to duplicate that text clone. So right click duplicate. And you'll see what that's done is it's sharpened up the text. It's less sort of rounded. And I think that's going to be a little bit better. It also comes forward a little bit from the drips. If we wanted to come forward a lot, we could change the blend mode to add, but I don't really want that. So that's just helping push it forward a little bit more like that, give it a bit more definition. So another thing I want to do with this height map group is I want to take my background image. I'm going to copy it, so Command C, come to the top here and paste that in. And then I'm going to set its blend mode to add. And then we're just going to reduce that opacity down to 20. And hopefully you can see what that's doing is it's giving us the effect of the paint being affected by the canvas texture. And that's making it a little bit more realistic, I think. Another thing we want to do is we want to come to the drips group and we want to turn on 
the drop shadow. And let's just set that up. I want to reduce the blur down to zero and the distance I just want a little bit. So th three is going to be enough, I think. And we can leave that angle at 315 because that's now matching the light of our indent filter. So you can see that's quite subtle, that drop shadow effect, but it just gives a little bit more sense of that being lit and being actually on the canvas. So a few more things I'd like to do. One of which is, as the, as the text wipes off, I'd like the effect of the canvas having been stained by the paint. So to do that, I'm going to take my text there and I'm going to make a clone of it. So make clone layer and I'm going to drag it down into my background group. Then I'm going to come to filters, color, levels, and I just want to reduce that black value down to around about there, something like that. Then come to the blend mode and set that to multiply. And I also want to come to filters, stylize, crystallize. And what we want to do here is turn the speed down to zero because we simply want the, the effect of roughness on the edges. So I think this is a little bit too dark. So let's just reduce that multiply value down to around about there. What's that? About 60 is looks about right. So then what we want to do is we want to animate this on so it starts to appear. You can see even as, as the paint is dripping off, it's looking like it's sort of leaching into the canvas and that's quite a good effect. But we don't really want it to appear until around five seconds. So at five seconds, let's set a keyframe. Let's set that value down to zero. Let's step forward to eight seconds. It's not critical really. And bring that back, uh, value back up to 65. And now you'll see the paint comes down, text is revealed, that staining is in evidence. Now the paint is a little bit too much on the same level as the text. I want it to be slightly back from that. So what I'm going to do is come into that height map group and I'm going to select that clone of the emitter there. So inside that group there, and I'm just going to reduce that opacity value down to 85. And you can see the difference that makes. It just makes the text a little bit more stand out. So it only needs a little bit and we've got it on a different level. And, and I think that just helps make it a little bit more interesting. So the other thing I'd like to point out is that because of the way we set up these text objects, they're uh, clones of each other, I can now come in and just edit the text uh, and everything updates. So there's a few more things I'd like to look at, one of which is a very small tweak to the height map. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to look for the emitter here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to very, very slightly adjust the Y value, so negative 10. And what that does, it just makes more of a droplet on the end there. Just let me show you before and after. I think that just looks a little bit better. So the other thing I'm not happy with is that because of the gravity effect, the particles getting pulled down a little bit too uniformly, even though we've introduced some speed variance into the particles. So what I'm going to do is just increase those values, I think. So I'm going to come to the tall particle cell. I'm going to increase that speed randomness value to 275. And I'm going to do the same with the short. I'm going to in increase that speed randomness to 175. And now let's have a look at how that plays. Quite a bit more random variation in there. Lots of kind of interesting movement towards the end there as the, the whole thing starts to fade away. So I think that's a, a better result. But really, I'm going to urge you to do your own thing with this. And, uh, you know, if you want more variants, go ahead and, and, and play with those controls till you get a look you like. OK, so my the final thing I want to do is, supposing we're not that happy with the white there, what about introducing some colour? So I'm going to add a new group and I'm going to import an image and it's this thing here called uh, painted panels. I'm just going to increase the scale and then what I'll want it to do is I'll want it to uh, track down with the paint. So I'm going to come to the first frame 
and I'm going to set a wire keyframe and let's just scroll it up. We can probably go to about there and then round about here. Let's let's scroll it down so that we've so that's about 11 seconds there. Scroll it down to about there. So then what we're going to do is we're going to add an image mask to this right click add image mask and we're going to use that main drips group as the source drag it into the source well and to turn drips back on again and we're going to set this group here to blend mode color burn and that's created this really rather interesting effect of the sort of multicolored paint what we need to do though is we need to blur it so that we're getting horizontal streaks I think so we'll take that painted panels element, add a Gaussian blur, set the amount to 128 and have zero on the horizontal there. So we've just got vertical streaks and that looks quite nice. We, if we wanted to be a little bit more fancy, we could even come into the filters distortion and we could look for underwater. And let's reduce that speed down to 0.01. And you can see that's just sort of swirling the paint down a bit. And that's really quite a nice effect. So you probably won't want to go absolutely crazy like this, but it gives you an idea of what you can do with a with an interesting coloured texture to give it a bit more a bit more interest. Okay, so there you have it. Thanks very much indeed for watching, and I hope to see you again another time.